Please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. Welcome back everybody. Part 10 here in the single-ended KT88 amplifier build. Oh, hey Lucy. Wanna say hey to the camera? Come here. Come on. Jump up. Come on. You say hey to everybody. Tell them hey. Yeah, she's a good girl. Okay. All right. Anyway, part 10 here in the single-ended ampli KT88 amplifier build. All right, I'm going to be flat out honest with you. I lied to you. So... Not intentionally, but um, video nine, I kind of said, hey, this is the last in the build, and I'm going to do two more videos. It's going to be three more videos. Um, I've actually decided to insert video 10 here in between uh, the final build and the uh, kind of full walkthrough and the um, tweaks video. And what this is going to be based on is performance testing, um, single in, I mean, uh, ultra linear versus triode mode. So I got some questions about that and I was going to do it in the tweaks video, but I thought I'd go ahead and get it out there today. Okay. What we're going to do is perform a series of about four or five tests in triode mode right now. And then when we're finished with those, we'll perform the exact same test in uh, ultra linear mode. So I just kicked this off. Um, So we're kind of sweeping through. Wow, these numbers are low. Check this out. We're 0 0.1, 0 0.8. Interesting. So it seems to have frequency-wise here. You know, if you go back up here to around 20, 30 hertz, as soon as you hit 30 hertz, it's below 1% distortion. And it rides that all the way down here to 0.019% distortion, up around a, a kilohertz. And then it slowly on an incline all the way up. And even at 20 kilohertz, you're at 0.466% distortion. So some really good looking numbers along the way here. All right, so our second test here will be frequency response. And basically what you're doing um, here is you're feeding the amplifier um, and just measuring the amount of gain coming on the output compared to the input across a different set of frequencies, um, starting with 20 hertz all the way up, in this case, to 50 uh, kilohertz. The previous test we ran was really a percent of distortion versus frequency. In other words, we swept across the entire fre audio, audio frequency range and we measured distortion along the way. Okay, so this is a little interesting here. So you're wondering, hmm, so it's pretty flat right here from about um, 40 hertz. Which, that's about where you stop, stop hearing and start feeling. Um, you get down here in 20, 10 hertz, you really don't hear it much. You feel it. Um, so from about 40 hertz all the way up here and you know into the 10 12 kilohertz pretty flat before that 40 hertz you've got a little bit of gain going on here so there it's you know it's much like a uh, you know a bass uh, or treble circuit uh, this would be uh, kind of uh, something accentuating uh, the bass here below 30 frequent 30 hertz um, likely this is the uh, feedback um, loop causing this um, and then as we get out here, you know, we start to dip off, but we still don't hit minus 3 dB until we get up to 42 kilohertz. So, um, you know, pretty good. Um, got good bass response. This is why uh, this thing <laughs> sounds really good for a uh, single-ended amp. A lot of single-ended amps have a lot lose out on the, the bottom end there, the bass. Um, and then we get up here, a little bit of loss in here on the uh, high end. You're down a half a dB or so, but that's... It's not a lot. Um, a really good frequency response for a single-ended amplifier here. All right, from here we're going to take it over to the bench. Okay, we're still in triode mode, um, driving signal into this amplifier. Might back down on that a little bit. And uh, okay, all right. Now let's uh, let's hit the square wave, and you can see here um, still super sharp edges. Um, Little or no ringing on the top, very little slope here, which, you know, the reason this is dipping a little bit here on this end is because this square wave is made up of a whole series of frequencies from low to high, and you're losing a little bit on the, on the bottom end here, um, as you can see, I mean on the high end, um, and that's what we saw a minute ago in the scope, that's why you've got slope going this way. Um, if you had slope going this way or some of the back end um, rounded off, 
those would be low frequent frequencies you were rolling off on that side. So um, yeah, looks really, really, really clean. And and um, as I scale it, um, you can see that was getting on down there below 100 hertz. You can start to see a little bit of gain there. And as we rise it all the way on up, it stays solid. Um, still not a lot of overshoot ringing. Um, maybe you can see the slightest little bit there, but not much of anything. And this thing is at its sweet spot back here at the one kilohertz range. Um, I do think there's a little more slope here in the triode mode than ultralinear, but we'll figure that out here in a minute. Okay, just like yesterday, there's not even hardly a blip. I can barely see a few little harmonics down here at the very, very bottom end down here. And they're just kind of like little teeny blips. One thing I will notice is that the slope of this uh, signal here has a little wider bandwidth at the bottom. Um, it's not quite as sharp as it was in ultralinear mode, if my memory serves me well. If I overdrive this, um, then you start to see, and I think it's up here around 3 kilohertz, you see your first, 5 kilohertz or so, see your second, got one out here at 7.1 kilohertz that's a little odd but um, yeah and I mean I, I'm way over driving this amplifier in this thing at that point so still amazing looking response out of this unit in triode mode so let's head back over to the desktop and uh, measure it up in oh, oh we got one more test one more test hang on how could I forget this test it's probably the most important one okay Here's what we're going to do. We're going to drive this signal, and I'm going to have to change the uh, volts per division here. I'm going to drive it until it starts clipping. All right, I start barely start to see it right here. Um, as I read, right there, 22, right there, 21, right at 22 volts peak to peak signal. I start a little bit of clipping on this. So let me go do the math on that. Okay, if you do the math on this, the way you do it is 22.1 volts peak to peak. Um, so you take half of that, um, which would be about 11 volts, and then you, you know, V squared over R, um, power is equal to V squared over R, so 11 times 11, um, and then divide that by 8, R being the uh, resistance of the dummy load, 8. And what you end up is 15.125 watts out in triode mode, before this unit starts clipping. I think that is friggin' phenomenal if you wanna <laughs> if you wanna be honest about it. Alright, let's uh let's head back over to uh now ultralinear mode. Okay, now we are in ultralinear mode and I just clicked the run button and we're starting to do the same um, frequency um, sweep across the uh, the entire audio audio frequency spectrum. And while doing that, we're measuring total harmonic and distortion all along the way, and we're plotting that out here. So if you'll notice here, um, it's a little less steep, um, doesn't quite bottom out, although we're down at 0.13%, it's still not 0 .0 some percent. But at no point here are we, you know, even up here at 20 kilohertz, we're not above 0.6% distortion, and uh, we really don't cross the 1% line until we get down below 40 hertz um, on this side. So um, either way, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a stellar uh, performing unit right now. We'll run the uh, frequency response. So here's what we're doing. We're measuring, remember again, we're sweeping the frequency response and at, at, at 50 different intervals, that's what this little thing here that says 50 steps is, at 50 different intervals along the way, we're measuring the amount of gain coming out of this amplifier, the input compared to the output, um, and determining if you're you know, losing frequency. There again, just a little bit of gain here on the front end, not as much, um, staying pretty flat all the way through. Starting to dip down here as you get up into the 12, 14 kilohertz range. But even here at 20 kilohertz, which is beyond what most people can hear. Most people can hear up to about 18 to 20 kilohertz at the high end. Somebody 
my age or older might be down in this 13, 14 um, kilohertz range. Um, but even there, you're only down minus 0.6 dB at that point. So, and uh, to get to the minus 3 dB point, there again, you're up into the 40, 40 kilohertz range. So, no matter how you go about it, it's a stellar performing app on both of these, uh, both uh, triode and ultra linear um, from a uh, kind of a, an audio analyzer standpoint. Okay, here we are back now. I uh, powered the unit off, switched to ultra linear, let it warm back up, and now we've got our sine wave feeding back into it, and now we're going to go square wave. And look at that. Um, I mean, Honestly, not a lot different signal to be honest. It's uh, you can see the slightest little bit of ringing right here. Not much overshoot, but if you were to uh, zoom in on that and get it ultra clear, the teeniest little bit of ringing there, um, as you can see. And as I scale this up frequency-wise down, it uh, you start to see a little bit of slope here on the unit. And as I bring it on up in frequency. Stay solid. Um, stay solid. Back down to a kilohertz. Which seems to be the... St still got a little bit of slope on here. Um, dropping off those high frequencies as well. Um, let's take a look up here now at the uh, spectrum analyzer. Okay. As you can see here, I think the bandwidth of the uh, peak here is a little tighter on this and still not seeing any blips <laughs> off to the right. Let me let me overdrive this thing a bit. Oops, wrong way. And you're starting to see the same little 3 kilohertz, 5 kilohertz. Uh, and this this scale, even though it looks like it stops here, it's off the chart. Um, way, way off. I'm overdriving this far considerably and it'll tell you here it's in overload mode. Um, so, at any rate, let's go back and test the, uh, the, the power. Okay, here we go. Um, by the way, about 85% of all testing you would want to do on a unit like this, you can do with a dummy load and an oscilloscope. The uh, spectrum analyzer is nice, um, but it's not the end-all, be-all. Um, let's start driving this thing. I'll probably have to drop the uh, volts per division here. Oops, I maxed out on my amplitude knob, so I had to push it in. I had it pulled out to uh, to give it 20 dB of attenuation. I'll check this out. Huh. If you'll notice here on the top, this side we're starting to flat, flatten out a little bit on the top side. Right about in there is where we're looking good. So somewhere right around here at 25 volts is where we start um, start clipping. Let's just see what 25 volts looks like. Okay, the 25 divided by 2, 12 and a half, 12 and a half times 12 and a half divided by 8 gets you 19.53 watts out. So you're getting a little more out on this unit in ultra linear than you do in triode, which is to be expected. And, um, you know, all in all, I think this thing is uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> either way you roll with it, either way you like it, it's pretty darn amazing. All right, I've had three kids. Uh, they're all in their 20s now, but um, I remember, you know, holding them in my arms to when they were uh, first delivered. That's about where I'm at with this, this single-ended app. Uh, it just keeps making me happy. Um, it just sounds great. Uh, got all my kids home for the holidays. I'm wanting to get one of my rooms in here cleaned out and get a... Uh, larger size listening room set up and uh, so that's one of my goals and the only thing that's inspired me to do that because I've had so much junk crammed in that room um, I, I kind of lost my listening room aspect of it um, has been this amplifier so I'm going to spend a day cleaning up around here so thanks for watching everybody having a lot of fun I'm, I'm going to crank out hopefully tomorrow Sunday morning uh, these next two videos and wrap this thing up so uh, 
Can't say enough good things about this amp. And you know, hey, I had an interesting comment. Somebody made a comment yesterday saying, wow, I really can't imagine someone spending that kind of money to build an amp. And I'm sitting here going, hmm, seven or eight hundred dollars, you know, for a, a single ended amp that's putting out between 15 and 19 watts um, that performs like this. I think you're going to spend three grand um, on a commercial product to get something in this range. So, um, and you get the value of building something yourself and learning a lot along the way. So, uh, might be the best seven or eight hundred dollars I could even imagine spending there. So if you get some extra money from Santa Claus, think about what you might do with it. Thanks for watching, everybody.